please welcome to the stage EVP Mission Critical Database Technologies, Juan Loeza. Hi folks, thanks everyone that managed to find their way over here from the other building. Um, so today we're gonna talk about something that we've been working on for a number of years that's really exciting. We're very excited about it. It's called Document Relational Duality. Uh, and it's really about converging documents, objects, and relational in a very unique uh, and very uh, effective fashion. So I'm gonna start with a simple analogy that we're gonna use to kind of make the concepts a little clearer, which is um, analogy of, of making a cake. How do you make a cake? So there's really kind of two strategies. One is you make a cake from basic ingredients. So the nice thing about that is you can make anything you want with basic ingredients. All you need is the recipe and you can make whatever you want. The bad part of it is it requires some skill and effort to make the cake. And then the second way to make it is you start with something like a cake mix, where it's very simple because all the ingredients are pre-mixed and all you have to do is bake it. Uh, now, what's the downside of that? Um, well, you can only use it to make a cake once you have a cake mix. Okay, so that's the, that's the analogy. And relational is really like uh, cooking with basic ingredients. And the reason is because like cooking with basic ingredients, you combine data, normalized data, using declarative SQL to make any application you want. So you can make anything out of it. It's super simple with SQL. Now, what's the challenge? It requires a little bit of skill and effort uh, to map application objects to the database data. And let's drill down into that just a little bit. So applications want to consume data as programming language and use case specific objects. Uh, so think of those as cakes, the final product. Uh, so in an application, the data looks different. It looks like a complex object type. Uh, they have variables, references, methods. Uh, usually there's a class hierarchy that it follows. Now in a relational database, the data looks very different. It's tables with rows and columns. It's very flat. So that's what's called the object relational mismatch. And developers have to you know, bridge that mismatch. They have to jump that to get their, their language data into the database. And there's been a number of attempts to bridge this mismatch in the past. Um, first one a long time ago was called object databases. And the idea there was you take your application data, and as close as possible, you just stuff it into the database in its application format. Uh, then came object relational databases, where the database community, like us, decided we were going to build uh, user-defined types and inheritance into databases to make it a closer match to what the application did. But of course, the application language is different from what we have in the database. Uh, something that's very popular now is called object relational mappings, or ORM. The idea there is you just generate code on the application side to help map these objects to tables. And finally, probably most recently, uh, there's document databases. And the idea there is you just store the data as JSON documents instead of tables. So the analogy I use for these is most of these are really like cake mix. They're trying to make, they're trying to bridge that, that uh, application database mismatch by pre-preparing everything, using something closer to the application format. So object databases, object relational, document, it's like cake mix. Object relational mapping is a little different. What, we, what they did there is uh, they basically make it easier to convert objects into relational. OK, so that's the past. And nothing's really solved the problem uh, uh, as well as we think we can now. So we now have a new approach. And the idea is to architecturally provide the simplicity of a use case specific solution, like a cake mix, along with the power of multiple use cases, like cooking with basic ingredients. And that's what we're going to introduce today. We call that document relational duality. And to help me with that, I'm going to bring uh, two experts onto the stage. I'm going to bring Tirthankar Lahiri, who's a database expert, and Beta Hammerschmidt, who's a JSON expert at Oracle. And 
we're going to start with a simple example of how you build a relational application. Trithankar is going to lead us through that. All right, so let's make a cake. Let's imagine we're building a simple application that represents a student course schedule. A student has you know, courses with names, a course time, a classroom, and a teacher. Um, a, a simple example like this would use data stored in multiple normalized relational tables. In this case, a student table, a teacher table, a course table, and a table mapping students to their courses. Now, this is a very flexible approach using normalized tables. But it is not always the easiest for developers, even in this simple example, to build, say, the schedule for Jill, one has to look at all four tables to assemble Jill's schedule. What the developer would really want is to build Jill's schedule using a single database operation. Beta, I was wondering, could you help with this problem? Yes, Tithanka. What if we would use JSON documents to build this application? This would really simplify database access. So JSON is very popular as an access and interchange format because it is so simple. A JSON document can represent any object of your language, for example, the uh, student schedule, as a simple hierarchy of name value pairs. JSON is self-describing, it's self-contained, this makes it ideal to transmit data, and it is also schema flexible. So if your application changes, you can adapt your JSON to reflect these changes. Today, JSON is already widely used. In modern programming languages like JavaScript, developers use it to build mobile or web applications. A REST API typically responds with a JSON document, and development tools widely use JSON as well. So let's look at our example. We want to build a system to manage student courses. And all that information for that use case can be represented in a single JSON document. So for example, the data for each of Jilt's courses is embedded in Jilt's JSON schedule document. So JSON is very easy to work with, but how do we store it in the database? Well, document databases are very popular because they allow to access and store JSON documents with very simple APIs. You do a get to fetch a document out of the database, you display it on your screen, you modify it, and you can send it back. Very simple. So the simplicity of JSON and document databases are really analogous to a cake mix. It's a very simple format that reduces the skills and efforts needed to persist your application data. And the good news is Oracle, as of today, is already a great document database. We provide more and better document functionalities than pure document databases like MongoDB. Already 20 years ago, we added support for XML document, and in 2014, we added support for JSON in the database. And every release since then had continuously enhanced JSON capabilities in the database. It's very easy to store, retrieve, analyze, manipulate documents using SQL APIs, and all the enhancement, or most of the enhancement we made to the SQL language, we also contributed to the open SQL standard. So you see in this example, it's very easy to create a table which stores a scheduled document as JSON, and I can just peek inside JSON documents to find the ones that I'm interested in. So I would say, Oracle Database is the best document database that you can get today. Why is that? First, we provide the same easy-to-use APIs. There is Soda, which is stored for simple Oracle document access, which supports REST as well as many uh, drivers like Python and JavaScript, and it's also MongoDB compatible. So you can take a MongoDB application and connect it to Oracle and run the Mongo workloads there. But beyond these, no SQL document APIs. We also give you full standard SQL-based access to the data. This is very important if you want to do reports or analytics over JSON documents. If you want stored procedures, we allow them to write them in JavaScript, Java, or PL SQL. And as you would expect from an Oracle database, you can write transactions spanning many documents, and they are fully asset consistent. 
And Parallel SQL will automatically parallelize operations across JSON documents so that analytics or bulk operations get super fast. Plus, we offer a serverless autonomous JSON database, which make working with JSON super easy. So, Chitanka, what do you think? Should we use JSON documents for well, our application? I'd like to say not so fast, Peter. JSON is great, as you said, but it has some limitations when used as a storage format. Everything Beta said about JSON is true. It is great to be used as an access format. But when you use JSON as a storage format, it can create issues with data duplication and consistency. Even in this simple example of student schedules, the course and teacher information is stored redundantly in each student schedule. And duplicate data is inefficient to store expensive to update, and difficult to keep consistent. And this problem actually gets worse, because as apps evolve, they always add new use cases. And data duplication increases when you add new use cases. For example, when you add a teacher schedule use case, in addition to the student schedule use case. The teacher schedule use case requires a new document shape, where the teacher is the root of the document, not the student but it still shares some of the same course data as the student's schedule document. You know, you can see as you add you know, cases to the app, things rapidly get out of control. There's lots of duplication of data. So when you update something that's shared on many documents, such as something like a classroom, you have to now update many student schedule documents as well as many teacher schedule documents. You know, to use this analogy of cake mixes, JSON is like a cake mix. A cake mix is architected specifically for a single use case, not for multiple use cases. Once you mix ingredients, you really can't use them for anything else at that point. Um, so document databases understand that this is the problem, and they've added some features to try to you know, partially address it. For instance, documents can now reference other documents, Using references, you can normalize documents to remove duplication into little pieces. Um, and document queries can aggregate data from multiple documents into a single result document. So in our simple student schedule example, the student schedule document can be modified to include a reference to a separate student document instead of including it. And it can also reference a separate course document instead of including it. And that course document can then reference a teacher document instead of including it. So does document database normalization solve all the problems with document databases? That's a, that's a good question, Trithankar. So we showed how you build the app in relational. We showed JSON makes it a lot simpler. But now we have some issues. We have that data duplication problem, the data consistency problem. So, ah, that can be solved also with the documents by normalizing the documents. So what's the problem here? If you actually normalize the documents, the simplicity of documents is lost. And what you actually end up with is actually the worst of both worlds. So the document structure now mirrors the normalized relational format. For every table, you end up with a separate document. And the simplicity of the documents for the application level is lost. You've fragmented your documents into multiple documents that you have to operate on separately. And when you did that, you didn't get the power of SQL and relational. So you've actually created a worst of both worlds situation. And it's even worse because performance suffers because you have to chase these references and you lose shard locality. Most document databases are based on sharding. The minute you, you break up your document like that and use it for multiple use cases, that sharding doesn't work anymore. And of course, you have to, uh, you have to enforce the referential integrity yourself in the application. So we've worked our way through this thing, and documents are very good for certain use cases, but when you try to adapt them to be general purpose, they kind of lose their benefits and they become worse. So the big picture is JSON and documents in general, they're great. They're great for the right use case. It's like cake mix is great for baking cakes. Uh, 
But as the complexity, as more use cases are brought in, they get worse and worse, and in fact, they become hazardous because you get data duplication and consistency issues. Uh, because of this, a lot of data experts consider document databases to be what's called an anti-pattern. It's something that looks really appealing at first, but gets worse as the application becomes more complex. And the analogy I use, it's kind of like a motorcycle. It's great for a single user, but if you want to take your family on a getaway for the weekend with your kids and luggage, that's a much more complex use case. It's not so great anymore. In fact, it's, it becomes hazardous. And that's where relational shines. So, Relational is more difficult for the simple cases, but the power of relational, of combining data into any form that you want, becomes super important as you add more use cases and complexity. So we already talked about, Beta talked about how we support documents in Oracle. So the nice thing about that is Oracle developers can already choose the data format for each specific piece of data to maximize the benefits. So using Oracle today, you can choose to represent some data in documents, other data in relational, and you can map out kind of the best of both worlds. You use JSON when the data is not used in very complex ways or in multiple use cases, and you use relational when the data is shared by a lot of, of use cases. You can actually get the best of both worlds. Um, this sounds really good, but can we do even better? Instead of choosing, I got to choose for each specific piece of data, do I want it as a document or do I want it as relational? Can I get the benefits of document plus relational? Uh, can I get all the benefits of relational? The use case flexibility, the queryability, the consistency, the space efficiency, plus all the benefits of document. We talked about the easy mapping the language types the agile schemaless development, hierarchical data format, and standard interchange format. What you really want is the line at the top that's the sum of the two cases. And the analogy here, back to the cakes, is can we get the power of cooking with basic ingredients plus the simplicity of prepared foods? And because this is a virtual environment, not a physical environment, we can. You can imagine a world where you start with basic ingredients, but you can create any food you want if you just give the system a recipe. Give it the recipe, it generates what you want. And that's what we're introducing with JSON Document Relational Duality, which is a new feature of Oracle Database 23C. It architecturally provides the use case simplicity of JSON with the multiple use case power of relational. That's the design goal. Now, how does this work? How does JSON relational duality work? Well, we store data as rows and tables to provide all those benefits of relational. And when we store the data in tables, we can also include JSON columns in there. As we talked, we can store JSON in Oracle today, and those are great when the schema is dynamic or evolving. And then we can access the data using JSON documents to deliver all those application simplicity benefits of documents. And Beta is going to walk us through exactly how you do this now with Oracle Database. This is very exciting, JSON relational duality. So how do you work with this? So you create one or multiple JSON duality views. And each of these views declares the recipe for assembling normalized rows into a JSON document. So this is an example here how to declare the student schedule duality view using in-database graph SQL syntax. And the nice part about this is that the structure of this view mirrors the structure of your desired JSON object. So if your use case needs a document in a certain structure or hierarchy, then the view's definition mirrors it, which makes it super easy to find it for a developer. So you see that the tables that have the values that we see in the JSON document are being used in this view. So you see student, course, teacher being used, and you see them being used in some place in that hierarchy that makes up this document. For, then you specify the JSON properties. So you give the names that you want, and you map them, them to the table's columns that hold this value. And you don't have to pick all the columns in the table. You can pick and choose the one you need. So now what you do at the end with JSON duality is you fetch documents from the database. 
to use them in your application, but it is not read-only. You can modify them and send them back. So now we want to make some updates to in our student management system. We want students to pick some courses, add them to their schedule, but we don't want the students to change the teacher or the time of the course. So we need to specify which parts of this JSON document can be updated and which cannot be updated. And this is very simple using this annotation. So you can uh, specify updatability rules on each level of this hierarchy. There is a equally simple annotation called unnest, which is, allows to unnest objects with their parent uh, object. So you can combine the fields of one object or of multiple objects into one. So if you select from this student duality view, you access the underlying tables and you return Jill's schedule as a JSON document. So this document has all the data, all the values you need for this application and also all the IDs you need to make updates. And you can see here in this schedule the information on the course, the time, the room, the teacher, it's all combined in one object, and this is because we unnested these by merging them into the parent. You can access these views using SQL. See a simple example here where we peek inside and look for the documents where the name is Jill, and the other example on the bottom is the exact same query, but in a NoSQL uh, JSON filter expression. So you can choose whether you want to use SQL or NoSQL document APIs to work with this. So what does the developer gain from this? First, it's really simple to work with JSON duality views. You get a document from the view, you make any changes that are needed, and you put it back into the view, and the database automatically detects the changes that you made and modifies the underlying rows. Any other duality view that shares the same data will immediately reflect this change. So a, a developer no longer has to worry about inconsistent data if they work with many JSON documents. Not every application uses REST. The same applies for the other document APIs like SODA or if you use our Oracle MongoDB compatible API. The other benefit is extreme flexibility. So on top of the simplicity, a developer can easily build document-centric applications that store new documents as relational data, and they can also operate on existing relational data as documents. This comes extremely handy if you want to create JSON microservices on top of an existing relational database. And of course, you benefit from all the capabilities of Oracle's converged database. On. Okay, thanks, Beta. So Beta showed how you define this duality between documents and relational data. And I want to talk a little bit about this, how you do that, because it's really a declarative mapping. And this is super important, uh, because one of the key benefits of SQL and relational is declarative programming. What that means is the developer tells the database what they want, and the database develops it and determines how best to do it. And this is one of the key benefits of relational, which is why relational has thrived for so many years. And the JSON duality views extend this declarative programming into JSON. So that enables the reads and writes of JSON from and to tables. That's what Beta just talked about. You can also run powerful JSON queries and analytics on the exact same uh, view because it's declarative, and we'll automatically optimize them, we'll automatically parallelize them, we'll, we'll use the correct indexes. That all happens transparently to the application. It also helps hide the underlying table schema from the application, and we'll get back to that. Now, how does this compare to object relational mapping, or ORMs? It's much better for a number of reasons. One is it's completely language independent. It doesn't matter what your client language is. You define this mapping in the database once. It's optimized by the database. The database determines how to do it most optimally. You get all the data that you need in one round trip. With an ORM, you're basically making the SQL calls. Uh, you consolidate all this object mapping into the database. So there's one source of truth. It provides much better concurrency control, and we'll get back to that. That's a very important topic. 
and it enables database-side database JSON operations. So it's, it's really a very flexible and powerful mechanism. Now let's talk about uh, specialization. So remember, one of the issues with storing JSON documents is you have one format for that document. Now, because we're using the document relational duality, we can specialize each document for each use case. So you can create an application-specific view that specialized gives you just the data in just the format you want for a use case. So this makes it easy to add more use cases without creating all these uh, duplication and consistency issues. So for example, if you built the student schedule with a, with a duality view, you can add a new duality view for the teacher schedule. It organizes the data in very different ways, but it shares the underlying data, and you have no issues with data duplication. You can also specialize by reducing data, securing data. There's a lot of different benefits to this. OK, let's talk about the object persistence. So this is how we started. So how does this work? It's very simple. You take your application object, the language object that you use in your application, and you convert it to a JSON format. And this is very familiar and easy for developers because they do this all the time for REST APIs, JavaScript, et cetera. And then you just let the database store the JSON. It takes care of all the messiness of breaking it up into tables, checking consistency, optimizing, all the rest of it. So it's much, much simple. We've bridged that object relational uh, divide that we talked about at the beginning. And declaring this format, the persistence format in the database, has a lot of advantages. You know, we talked about it, it bridges the, the object relational mismatch. It also makes it easy for apps to operate on the same application objects using JSON APIs. And it centralizes that persistence format regardless of language or framework. And this is a big thing here, which is now the database understands these formats. It understands what a teacher is. So the database can do much more effective operations on these. For example, you can do an analytic operation at the app object level. You can do ETL at app object levels. You can replicate an app object. Today, relational databases replicate at the row level. Many downstream applications really want an application object, not a row level object. You can do text indexing. You can provide triggers on application objects. You can do validation of an app object, not a row, an app object. You can do security rules and business rules on app objects. So it opens up a wealth of possibilities in the database to assist the app in implementing the application and do it in a very efficient and very simple fashion. Also, it enables transparent schema evolution. So for example, if you change the underlying table schema that's used to implement the app object, you can hide that from the application by just creating a new duality view on top of the new schema format. And also, you can change the JSON format. So if you have a new app, that requires a variant of the, of the JSON uh, format, you can just create a new duality view for that new application and leave the old one for the old application so you don't break the old applications. You don't have to modify them at all. So it enables schema evolution much simpler. OK, so I've talked about the persistence and how that, that's declarative and how it's really useful. Now we're going to get into the core of the database, because this isn't just the mapping layer. We built this into the core of the database, including changing the concurrency algorithms of the database to adapt to the document model. And Tirthankar is going to explain how this works. OK. All right. So <clears throat> this is very exciting. Um, OK. This is a new and game-changing lock-free concurrency protocol that we introduced in Oracle Database 23C. Because conventional locking <clears throat> does not work when REST, GET, and PUT APIs are used, because GET and PUT are stateless. And you can't hold transactions and locks open across stateless calls. So JSON relational document duality implements a new lock-free concurrency protocol for documents. The database automatically detects when data underlying a document has changed between the initial read of the document and the subsequent write. If a change has occurred, the write operation <clears throat> is automatically rejected and returns an error. The app can then reissue the write based on the changed and correct data. This is also known as 
optimistic concurrency control. Now, why is this good? There are many benefits for lock-free optimistic concurrency control. It is really good for interactive applications since the data is not locked during human think time. It is great for mobile disconnected applications since rights of stale documents are rejected. It is also great for caching since rights of cached stale documents are also rejected. Oracle implements lock-free concurrency control using a unique value-based concurrency control architecture. As background, in the HTTP protocol, an e-tag is a signature or a fingerprint used for the contents of a web page. Oracle now uniquely extends this e-tag concept from HTTP into the core database to implement lock-free concurrency control. A database get automatically computes the e-tag and inserts that e-tag into the return document itself. When the modified document is later put back into the database, the database verifies that the underlying document rows still match that e-tag returned by the get. If the rows match the e-tag, the rows are automatically, uh, automatically atomically updated. If not, another user must have made changes and the put operation is rejected. And the put can then be retried using the new data. So this is really value-based concurrency control because the e-tag is computed based on values. Conflicting val updates are detected by examining the values themselves, not by adding locks or version numbers to the data. This is very powerful because since they're value-based, e-tags automatically synchronize updates to data that is shared by many different documents. For example, course data, as we mentioned, can be shared by many student documents and can be shared by you know, documents with different document routes, such as teacher schedule documents. Traditional lock-based or version-based concurrency control protocols work very poorly in these cases because they must lock multiple hierarchies, which can cause poor performance and deadlocks. Value base is very flexible. It works across documents and tables. So value-based e-tags automatically ensure consistency between direct row updates using SQL and document updates. For instance, you could be updating a course information using SQL while running a document put on a student's schedule that might include that course information. This enables any SQL application to update rows while apps use document APIs at the same time to update the same data. Another example of flexibility is that value-based concurrency control lets you ignore unimportant changes. An e-tag signature can exclude the data whose modification should not cause an update to fail. For instance, one could exclude the classroom for the e-tag for a student schedule document so that a student schedule update does not fail if the classroom changes. This is like having column level locking or element level locking in a document, which is a long desired feature for both relational and document databases. And value-based also works for pure relational data. It is a fundamental feature of Oracle Database 23C. E-tags are not just for documents. You can select the e-tag for Jill student record along with the Jill student record columns, make some changes in the client here, and then later on perform the update of Jill's row, which will only succeed if that e-tag has not changed in the meantime. And this is great for mobile applications that directly access tables. So this is a very, very exciting and unique concurrency control architecture. Beta, what else is new with document relational du duality views? Sorry. Yes, we've learned how we paid a lot of attention to make updates very efficient. But I want to go back a little bit and look at JSON duality views as a whole. So we spoke a lot about developers want flexibility and simplicity. But we also looked at how codes, code generators, or application can work with JSON relational duality views. 
So a low-code tool or an app or an IDE often wants to discover the structure returned by that API. It wants to know what are the field names, what are their data types, are there any format restrictions, are there mandatory, et cetera. And JSON duality views provide this information using the popular JSON schema standard. So this returns a structural summary of the views JSON API in JSON format. It is like running a describe on a table. But we went beyond that and enable the intended usage of the data to be declared in the database and then be discovered by IDEs. So for example, an IDE can then discover that a data value is not only a string, but it's an email or a phone number or a password, a credit card, and then it can take automatic action, for example, validate credit card numbers or hiding passwords as they're being typed. And Oracle Database 23C uses extended ISO SQL domains to declare a column's intended usage. You see an example here where we create a domain um, for an email and then use that domain when we create a table. So Oracle 23C will come with some predefined new domains but you can add new domains and optionally specify constraint display formats or collations for this. The domain of a column can also depend on the value of another column, therefore easily implementing flex fields. So domains provide a lightweight method for apps to benefit from the intended usage data. And there are also, they're much simpler than user-defined types and also non-disruptive because the domains can be treated as their underlying data type by an application. So there is no need to change an application when using a domain instead of a base type. They're functionally equivalent. So in JSON duality views, if you describe it, there is a simple call, describe this duality view, you will get a JSON schema. It lists the hierarchy, the data types, and you see here there is a field P email. It's not only a string, but it also refers to the domain email. So an application can now take action because it knows it's an email. For this. Okay, thanks, Beta. So not only do we have documents, the ability to read them, write them. We also have a way of introspecting the documents, saying what's in it, not just the structure, but what's in it. Is it a credit card number? Is it a phone number? In a very lightweight fashion, kind of like JSON is a very lightweight uh, a data structure. So we've added a lot of, of uh, new technology, new innovations to Oracle. So let me take a step back and talk about how this all fits together. So first of all, developers can store data as relational data, as table data. And this is really useful when the, when the schema is known. And of course, if you have relational data, you can access it using standard SQL. That's what we've had for a lot of years. And what we've talked about today is you can also access that same relational data using these new J JSON duality views. And this lets you both read and write the data, introspect the data, operate on the data with great concurrency control. Developers can also store data as documents. Uh, this is great for collections or table columns where the schema is dynamic or it's evolving. And you can access the documents using relational. Uh, so for a number of years, we've had something called JSON Data Guide that automatically creates views on JSON columns. It scans the columns, determines the schema, and creates a view on top of it. Or you can access documents, of course, using document APIs. So uh, e using either the ANSI JSON extensions that Beta talked about or the SOTA or MongoDB API. So we have all the different methods of both storing data and accessing data, and you, developers can use the best one depending on the use case. Also, you don't even have to choose one because you can start development using dynamic JSON. So when you start development, you may not know what your schema is going to look like. You start with dynamic JSON storage, and then at a later time, you can choose to transition parts or all of it to relational as the schema stabilizes. So not only do you get to choose one, you can dynamically change it as you go along. So the big benefit is you, the developer, get to pick the best storage format and the best access format for each use case and each phase of development. 
So you're not forced into a poor format or access format by database limitations. You get the full benefit of both, all the benefits. OK, let's talk about the key takeaways from today's talk. So what we've talked about is how we built JSON relational duality architecturally into the database. It's not a layer on top. It's built in into the core of the database. And what it gives you is the use case simplicity of JSON and the multi-use case uh, power of relational. So when you ask which is better for making a cake, is it with cake mix or with ingredients, you really want both. Sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. And that's what we're providing. We're providing the simplicity of a cake mix with the power of making with, with base ingredients. Now, JSON duality solves the problem that we started with. It makes it easy to persist in, and operate on application objects as JSON. And this bridges that whole JSON relational mismatch. They also enable data to be transparently read or written as either tables or as documents. So the exact same data, you can access it any way you want. And we also talked about this value-based concurrency control. That's a very new concurrency control mechanism that we had to implement deep in the, in the core of the database to make JSON du uh, duality real. Uh, that has a lot of benefits. It, it includes, it enables these stateless APIs, which is what people use with the uh, JSON documents. It enables interactive use cases. It enables mobile disconnected, so it's much better for mobile apps. So a lot of benefits there. Now, specifically, if you look at document developers, developers that love to develop using documents, what are the benefits for them? Well, it delivers that use case simplicity of JSON that they love with the use case scalability of relational. So a document developer can now specialize the document for, the use, for each use case without causing all this duplication and consistency issues that is the typical problem. Also, a document developer can easily build a document-centric app on existing relational data and use all the advanced features of the Oracle Converge database. OK, so that's document developers. What about relational developers? Well, for relational developers, uh, JSON duality is a much more efficient, centralized, simpler, and more consistent way to map data than an ORM. Also, it enables simple access to all the data needed to implement a use case in one call to the database in one round trip, those benefits that you get with JSON. And the flip side of the development ap applies to relational developers. They can easily create a SQL-centric app or run analytics on data that was created using a document-centric app. So you get all the benefits of both for each use case. So I'm going to end here on, uh, with a quote from Mark Stamer of Wikibon. What he says is, Oracle Database 23C definitively ends the long-running relational versus document debate. With JSON relational duality, we're delivering the best of both worlds. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. I think this is a really big deal. And I see, what I see this is it's really not just an Oracle feature. This is going to change the way developers use. And this technology will be adopted by many other products in the industry as well. And you can sign up to try this today with our 23C beta that's available now at the link here. You just take a picture of it and go to that website. Thanks very much.